Severe heart failure is a very major um, public health problem, um, especially now with increasing longevity and people living longer. Um, approximately, I think, um, one and a half million new patients are added every year in this country with severe advanced heart failure. And uh, the five-year survival for these patients is pretty dismal. In fact, in several instances, is worse than some major cancers. Less than 50% uh, are expected to survive five years. And especially if you present with severe heart failure, which causes uh, low blood pressure and um, has an effect on the other organs in the body, you stop making urine. And if drugs don't act, you really have very limited choice. And under those circumstances, your probability of surviving even two years is less than 10 percent. So you're really actually staring at death. And uh, for a long time, on patients for whom uh, medicines did not act, the options were very limited. And especially if you're young or, uh, or in an age group where you're actually actively working, it's, uh, it's a huge um, uh, effect and impact on the family as well. Uh, most of the time, the only realistic option for getting back to normal life would be a transplantation of the heart and put in a new heart in its place. While this technology has been around for the last two to three decades, uh, it has inherent uh, limitations, especially because the number of donor organs is limited worldwide and uh, especially so in this country where the awareness for donating organs is still not yet as much as it, sh it ought to be. Uh, that's number one. Uh, at best, you get 100 donors a year across the country, and that's not going to meet the demands of such a large population. The second thing is, uh, since the organ that you are looking for has to match your blood group, uh, you're not going to get it off the shelf like in a supermarket. You have to wait for some person, unfortunately, to have a brain death and donate the organ to you. And in the interim waiting period, a lot of patients die. In fact, the commonest mortality for heart failure patients awaiting a transplantation is in the waiting period. So uh, people have been looking at uh, mechanically replacing uh, the failing heart with pumps. And this current technology that we employed in this patient is actually a very sophisticated pump, which uh, is implanted inside the body. And it takes over the function of the left ventricle of the human heart. And uh, unlike a heart that we all are born with, this is a continuous flow pump. There's no pulse in it. It continuously sucks the blood from the left ventricle and pumps it back into the aorta. And it acts like a booster pump. The heart itself is not excised, but the, heart, the pump is placed. It's pretty small, about a couple of inches in length and width. And the only thing which exits out is a drive, it's a power source. It has a small cable which comes out and gets connected to the battery. Now most of us now have mobile phones, cell phones, and we know how important crucial battery power is. So it's the same here, if you don't have power, the pump would stop and you would die. So um, the power source is uh, by either AC mains or by means of uh, battery packs which the patient can carry. And the overall weight of the whole contraption, including the battery source, is around one kilogram. But the uh, advantage of this technology is that from a near moribund status where you're staring at death, you suddenly now have an artificial means uh, as, a, as a result of a pump, which takes over the heart's function, or at least the left ventricle's function. As a consequence, the, um, you have energy to do the kind of things that you always did before the patient became sick. So you can get back to normal activity, you can go back to work, leisure activities, people have gone on cruise ships on holidays. Uh, the, the, the only real um, uh, thing that you're not allowed to do is to immerse yourself in a pool of water. So swimming is a problem because the cable gets wet and can potentially get damaged. Apart from that, you can do pretty much what anyone else can do. And the, the, with the current sensor technology and material science on the basis of which this pump was built, uh, a lot of patients now are approaching 10 years and still going strong. So the 10 year survival is approaching the results of transplantation, which has been a gold standard. So in, in my opinion, it's a real breakthrough because if you can get the kind of outcomes that you will get with a brand new heart, 
without having to go through the uh, waiting for a new heart, without having to have immunosuppression because when you get a heart transplant you really get somebody else's organ. And so you have to be on lifelong medication to prevent the body from rejecting it. Here you don't have to be on any special medication except for <coughs> blood thinning pills uh, the, like the ones you would take for uh, prosthetic valve replacement. So in our opinion it is a real breakthrough. Currently the problem is still the high cost of this device and the cost of this technology which uh, unfortunately puts it beyond the reach of a lot of people in, in India and worldwide in fact. But like everything else with increasing penetration of this technology and with increasing usage, uh, we expect the cost to come down and uh, my prediction is over the next decade artificial hearts as a as a method of sustaining life in patients with advanced heart, heart failure will be universally available in most health systems. The other thing which uh, is an area where we at least I personally have been working on is um, whether we can build this kind of pumps in this country uh, which is certainly possible um, and uh, I'm involved with two major research groups trying to build these pumps and we expect that over the next two years we'll have something uh, on offer which would uh, be available for the average middle class Indian.